I recently transformed my pantry from this to this. In today's video, I'm going to share my entire process from drawing up the plans to building the shelves. I'll list all of the supplies used down in the description box as well as the timestamps so you can skip around to any part of the video. I started by ripping out all of the old shelving and the cleats. Whoever installed these didn't use any screws, only nails to secure these in place. So all it took was a hammer to get them all removed. It's easiest for me to draw up my design plans when I have an empty room to work with. So once the shelves were out, I took my dimensions and I started to draw out my plans. If you want to skip ahead to the actual build, I will leave the time up on the screen right here for you to jump ahead to. And if you are like me and you would like to see how to map everything out beforehand, that's what I'm going to get into right now. Using graph paper, I started with the overhead view of the pantry. I drew a rectangle and wrote out my dimensions. My pantry is 69 inches wide by 36 inches deep. I decided I'd be adding U-shaped shelves. I started out planning for 12 inch deep shelves. I will explain shortly why I ended up changing that. Next, I drew a front facing view of the pantry and started figuring out how much space I wanted to leave between all of the shelves. I decided to leave 20 inches beneath the bottom shelf to make room for larger bulk items, 16 inches between the bottom and the second to the bottom shelf, and then 12 inches between the top shelves with a total of five shelves altogether. When you're planning out your pantry and deciding how many shelves you can fit, don't forget to calculate for the thickness of the shelves themselves. I knew I would be using three quarter inch thick wood, so I accounted for that when figuring out how much space I would have left at the very top of the pantry. Next, you'll want to figure out all of your pieces and their dimensions. And if this part seems confusing, it will make a lot more sense to you whenever we actually install the shelves. I'm using one by twos for the cleats. I know I will need one running along the back wall of the shelf that is 69 inches wide. For the cleats on the side walls, they will run the full length of that wall as well, minus the thickness of the cleat on the back wall that they will butt up to. So my wall is 36 inches wide on the sides, minus the three quarter of an inch cleat on the back wall, making the cleats on my side walls 35 and a quarter inches wide. At this point, I decided to change the shelf depth to 11 and a quarter inches deep, which will make sense in a minute. So my last cleats on the wall, which are on that inner wall where the door is need to not stick out any further than the edge of my shelf. If the shelf is 11 and a quarter inches deep and I subtract the thickness of the cleat that's on that wall that it's going to run into, that would make it 10 and a half inches. I decided to just go with 10 inches so that cleat will stop about a half of an inch before the edge of the shelf. Now that I have the dimensions for my cleats, I'm going to work on the dimensions for my shelves. I decided to use plywood for the shelves and I know they're gonna be 11 and a quarter inches deep. Again, I will need one per shelf that runs the full width of the back wall, so they will be 69 inches wide. On both sides, I will need a piece that fits joined up to the front of the back shelf. Subtract the 11 and a quarter inch depth of the back shelf from the 36 inch wide side wall and I will need a 24 and three quarter inches wide side piece for my shelves. Next, I need to calculate the pieces that I will need for the shelf facing. 
I decided that I would use 1x2s for these as well. When these get installed, the 1x2s are actually 3 quarters of an inch thick, so that'll add 3 quarters of an inch to the depth of the shelves, making them 12 inches deep total. This is why I decided not to make the plywood 12 inches deep, since this will add that extra 3 quarters of an inch. For this, you want to measure the dimensions of the front edge of the shelves. My back shelf is 69 inches wide minus the 11 and a quarter inches from both of the side shelves leaves me with 46 and a half inches of exposed front edge on that back shelf. I will be adding a middle support bar that is one and a half inches wide. So I subtract that and that leaves me with 45 inches. I will divide that by two to go on either side of that middle support bar. And that's how I come up with the 22 two and a half inch pieces that will be the shelf facing on either side of the support bar. On the sides, I do the same thing and I subtract the 11 and a quarter inch shelf from the 36 inch wide wall. Then I find that I need a facing that is 24 and three quarter inches wide for each of those side shelves. The support bar will be 75 and three quarter inches tall, which is the height from the top shelf to the floor. At this point, I have all of my dimensions figured out and need to determine how much wood I will need. With a sheet of plywood, I can have it cut down at Home Depot to save me some time. I know I'll have them cut it lengthwise into 11 and a quarter inch wide strips. So I need to figure out how many sheets I will need to complete all of my shelves. I write down what I need on the right side, 69 inch wide shelves times five and 24 and three quarter inch shelves times 10. As I divide up the sheets, I mark them off of my list on the right hand side. This helps me just keep track of how many sheets I need as I go. It'll take two sheets of plywood, leaving me some left over in case I have any mess ups. Next, I need to do the same thing for my cleats and my shelf facings. I wrote all of the sizes and how many of each are needed on the right side. Then I divide eight foot long pieces by the sizes I need and I mark them off as I go. I like to start by subtracting my longest pieces needed first, then seeing what's left to use for my smaller pieces. This extra step will make it so much easier when making your shopping list. I also keep these plans and cut my boards divided exactly as I've drawn them up here to make sure that I have as little waste as possible. So now I know I will need to add 15 sticks of eight foot long one by twos to my shopping list. I hope that it was helpful to go through my design process with you guys. If this is beneficial to you in any way, hit that like button for me and leave me a comment letting me know if your process works like this. Finally, after tons of prep and planning and renovation, it's time to get these shelves installed. Using painter's tape and a measuring tape, I marked the wall where each of the shelves are going. This makes it a little bit easier when finding the height and attaching your cleats. Using my miter saw, I cut the cleats for the back wall. When you cut the cleats, it's always a good idea to take the first one inside and make sure that it fits where you need it to go before using that one as a guide to cut the rest of them. When installing cleats for shelves, you want to start at the very bottom. I held the cleat up to the wall and used a stud finder to mark the cleats where each of the studs are. Then with my level on top of the cleat, I secured it to the first stud. 
By securing it to the stud that is closest to the middle of the wall, I'm able to still shift the cleat up and down a little bit as I'm securing it to the rest of the studs to make sure that I keep it level. I used the stud marks on the first cleat to mark the stud marks onto the rest of my cleats before installing them. Then I made spacers to make it easier to attach the rest of the cleats to the wall. I started towards the middle and placed the spacer between the bottom and the second to the bottom cleat. Once I had it secured to that first stud, I slid the cleat over to the next stud mark and secured the cleat there as well. This method pretty much helps keep everything level with the cleat that's below it, but to be on the safe side, I used my level as well just to double check everything. Then I followed this method to attach the rest of the back cleats. When making spacers, you wanna make sure that they are the length of the space that you need between your shelves minus the height of your cleats. So for 12 inches between shelves, Subtract your one and a half inch cleat and then make a ten and a half inch spacer. The cleats on the side walls will be attached to the studs and to the back cleat. To get them ready, after cutting them to size, I used my pocket hole jig to add one pocket hole on one side of each cleat. I lined up the side cleat with the back one and used my level to make sure the side was level with the back. Then I attached the two with a pocket hole screw first, then with stud screws into the wall. I cut the last cleats down to size and added a pocket hole to one end of each cleat just like we did in the last ones. I don't have a stud to attach these to, so on the other end, I drilled a pilot hole. This will be for an anchor screw. I leveled these smaller cleats up with the ones next to them, and I drilled through the pilot hole into the drywall. I hammered a drywall anchor into the drywall and then attached the cleat to the anchor with a screw. Then I used a pocket hole screw to attach it to the other cleat. I just followed this method and got all 10 of these side cleats installed the same way. With all of the cleats installed, I got started on the shelves. I cut all of the long shelves for the back wall first. I'm using this plywood that I had picked up at Home Depot, and like I had mentioned earlier, I had them rip it down into long pieces that are 11 and a quarter inches wide. I decided to just use my miter saw to cut them down to length as well. Since I cut it this way, I did have to cut the board from one direction and then flip it over and finish the cut from the other direction. And I didn't have a circular saw with me that day. Otherwise, I would have used that instead. But this still worked and it got the job done. I dry fit the longer shelves before cutting the smaller shelves so I could double check my dimensions. Then I cut my smaller shelves and I dry fit them in as well, just to make sure that everything fits all together. At this point, you can trim a little bit more off of the end of a shelf if you need to, or if you have a gap and you realize one isn't long enough, hopefully you have a scrap piece left that you can use to recut one of your shelves. Before attaching the shelves, I needed to add pilot holes. As I pulled each shelf out, I marked the shelf where the pilot holes needed to go, making sure they wouldn't hit any of the screws in the cleats. I numbered each shelf as I pulled them out and I set them aside so they would fit easily back into the same space. I took the shelves back outside and added pilot holes in the spots that I had marked using a countersink bit so that the screws won't stick out over the top of the wood and they can be covered up easily with wood putty. 
The smaller shelves on the side need to be secured to the longer shelf on the back wall. I added pocket holes on the underside of the smaller shelves just on the one side that will touch the other shelf. The other side and the back will attach to the cleats. I took the longer shelves in and put them back in place using my one and a quarter inch wood screws to attach the shelves through the pilot holes and into the cleats. Then I installed the side shelves, attaching them from underneath with pocket hole screws into the shelf next to it, then with wood screws into the cleats. With the shelves in place, I double checked the measurements for my support bar and I cut it to size. Then I made sure that it was perfectly centered in front of that back shelf. Then I used my level and my nail gun and secured it in place, attaching it to every single one of the shelves. For the shelf facings, I needed one flat edge to go against the support bar and one mitered edge for the inner corner. The side pieces are the same with a mitered edge on one side that'll fit into the corner and a flat edge on the other that will sit against the wall. Once I had all of those pieces cut, I used my nail gun to secure them to the front face of all of the shelves. Now the shelves are built, but they still just look very unfinished. I wanted them to look as built in as possible. So going in with wood filler and caulking is going to make a huge difference in how finished the look is at the end. I used the wood putty to fill in all of the screw holes, the seams between the shelves, any knots in the wood that were really visible, the corners where the shelf facings met, and the nail holes in the front of the shelf facing where I attached it with the nail gun to the actual shelves. I used wood glue and pocket hole plugs to plug all of the holes in the cleats and the underside of the shelves. When I was done with all of that, I left everything to dry. I used my orbital sander with a fine grit sandpaper to go over all of the wood putty and pocket holes, as well as the top of the shelves and the shelf facings to make sure it's all smooth and seamless. I did have to switch to a coarse paper for a few of the pocket hole plugs that needed a little bit more sanding, but then I went back over them with that fine grit sandpaper. I swept everything up, then I used a damp rag to wipe off the rest of the dust. When the shelves were completely clean, I left them to dry again. I used Zinsser water-based primer to prime the shelves. I didn't bother with taping off the shelves or the wall since I needed to touch the walls up anyways. Once the primer dried, I rolled on the first coat of paint. I used Sherwin-Williams cabinet and trim paint in the color bright white. Before rolling on the second coat of paint, I went in and caulked all of the back edges along the walls. I used painter's caulk, running a bead along the edge, then smoothing it out with my finger. This helps to push it into the cracks and gives it a really nice, clean, smooth edge to paint along. This step probably would have been best if I had done it in between priming and the first coat of the cabinet and trim paint, but for some reason I just waited to do it until I only had one coat left to go, which works fine because the painter's caulk is white and it doesn't need more than one coat of paint over it and it looks perfect in the end. When the caulk dried, I rolled on the second coat of paint and I used a brush to cut in those back edges. 
Once that dried, I went back in with my brush and the wall color alabaster. I touched up the walls and I cut in the edges along the wall where it meets the shelf. After this, I just had to wait for the paint to dry and my pantry shelves are complete. I'm really proud of how this project turned out and I absolutely love the way my new pantry looks. If you guys got anything beneficial out of this video, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and let me know. In my next video, I'm going to show you guys how I did all of my organization in this pantry using mostly Dollar Tree items along with a few things on Amazon. So I will see you guys when that next video comes out. And in the meantime, you can check out one of these videos linked right here. Thank you guys so much for watching.